Okay, so today we're going to take a look at the RTSP on Wise Cameras in particular. I really like Wise Cameras. I'm not sponsored by them, even though it wouldn't be a bad deal. I would love it, but I just love because they actually are good quality and they let you do basically whatever you want with them. So to me, that's a big, big win. Right here in front of me, I have a Wise V2 and a Wise V3, just in case you want to see what the difference is. If you have one of them, this one is Wise V2 and this one is Wise V3. On the back, this is how Wise V2 looks. It has that house thingy. And on the back of Wise V3, you have these two triangles. So what we're going to do today, we're going to activate RTSP in them. And to do that, first, we will have to grab two files, depending on which camera you have. As you see right here, uh, they have the entire uh, walkthrough how to do it, but they unfortunately remove the links. Why? I have no idea. That's up to them. But they have the instructions really good, which I'm going to show you here on uh, this demo anyway. And the links uh, to the files luckily are still on github and you have to go here at this link that i will give you click this firmware downloads and in this case we need one for uh v2 which we see right here and one for v3 i don't have a wise pan but if you have a pan you'll get the pan in my case i'm just gonna download this v2 go here download and i'm just gonna throw the downloads on desktop just to have them there so this is the v2 and we're gonna download real quick the v3 as well just like that go to the three dots download it and you are almost good to go but before we continue we have to do a quick modification on the v2 because v2 we have to change the name on the v3 we don't have to do anything just leave it as is on the v2 now we have to rename it just demo and leave it just like that demo dot bin and v3 as it is but now to the cameras it doesn't matter what kind of cards you have on them if it's over eight gigs in memory the chances are it will not work uh don't ask me why but right here for example i have a 64 gig micro sd that is not gonna work and on this other one let me see what i have probably a small one because i recently changed a few things around on this one i have a 32 gigs so none of these will actually work for this one we are going to need an 8 gig uh micro sd even a 4 gig will work it must be formatted in fat32 it must that's not even an option it must be fat32 let me show you real quick just grab one of these thingies if your laptop or computer doesn't have a card slot like mine does here but just i'm gonna use this one anyway so you can see it easier just plug your uh micro sd card on this usb card reader and throw it somewhere in a usb and when it opens up you will have your card in here but before we do anything we're gonna right click we're gonna go to format and yes this is the card fat32 we're gonna hit start and hit ok wait for the for the format to be done and now the format has been done so what do we do here is open that uh, card again we take the file depending if we're doing the v2 or v3 first we're gonna do the v2 first really quick and just drop it on the root folder of that sd card not inside any folder just on the root itself and then we just eject the card right here yep we are safe to go and we're gonna plug the card on the v2 camera because that's a file we put in here this is our v2 and yep it goes this way let me just push it back in boom the card is in now here is the tricky part or the more important part of this whole thing is that while you plug it in power you must hold the setup button this button right here and you'll see the light that usually comes on on here uh it's kind of a yellowish light on the v2 you will hold the setup button till that uh light turns blue the moment it turns blue you let the setup uh go and wait for it to fully start let's 
just go on with doing that okay first after we put the card we find a way to hold this uh setup button yep it, i'm pressing it right now while i'm plugging the usb and the light is yellow right now and now it turned blue we let it go now i'm not pushing any buttons and just wait till the camera keeps starting and restarting and does its own uh thing just give it probably three to five minutes just to be on the safe side i would give it five minutes just leave it alone on the side to do its own thing it will start and restart and do all that good stuff so in a minute or two you will hear a click tick, tick, inside almost like a relay click and the light will start doing the blue and yellow and then it goes to a just blue going on at this point this camera is pretty much done and ready to go so we can unplug it and plug the card we want if you wish so but i highly should suggest you leave it as it is right now and in some cases it will connect automatically and as you see after a few minutes the uh camera connects by itself just leave it alone as it's reverberated my voice here yep so now how do you know the rtsp is on well that's very easy go to the thingy here that goes to settings and go to advanced settings scroll to the bottom now you will see the option that says rtsp that if you check on yours right now with normal software that you have in your camera you don't have this rtsp option and you can click on it and you can generate the link here for your rtsp i'm not gonna generate it here on camera but if you hit generate there in mine it will be regenerate because i already have it as you see now you can put this link with the username and password that you generated when you do this for the first time it will prompt you to generate a username and a password this is not the username and password that you use for your wise app itself this is only for this camera's rtsp and you are done with this camera now you are ready to disconnect it from power take this uh little micro sd card out and plug back in the micro sd card that you had before you are ready to go now the firmware has already been installed in the camera so you are ready to go plug this camera where you usually have it and we will continue to do the same with the v3 with the v3 is almost the same thing except the light will be here on the front and we do not need to change the uh name so let's do that really quick so you see it in real time being done we take the same 8 gig card that i had there plug it back in the usb micro sd card reader and let's go back in the computer this time we know it's already formatted to 32 so we don't need to reformat it okay we have the demo that bin right here just delete that file these other files are auto generated from the camera itself but we can just delete them if you wish so boom they're gone and now we take the demo uh wcv3 which is for the v3 camera just as it is this one we don't need to change just drop it on the root folder and eject the card just like we did before just like this boom now this one is ready to go as well and we're gonna plug it on the v3 camera real quick on the back here just lift this little rubber just push it with something whatever you happen to have and we'll do the procedure so i'm just gonna put this on the side here so i can hold it while holding the setup button pressed and now we plug the usb and wait for the light as you see it's red right now it will turn kind of blue purplish and now we let go the light is turned and we just wait for it now to finish doing its thing i'm not sure if the camera is showing it's kind of a two-tone blue and purple so you just leave it alone just like we did with the other one until it's done it will restart itself give it four or five minutes as i said and in some rare cases for example like this here it the camera just keeps blinking right all you have to do is just re put the camera on your app just click plus here add device cameras and go find v3 it's right here wise cam v3 and the light in the front v3 will flash red shortly after hold the setup button while it's plugged and when it says ready to connect click next 
I heard ready to connect, hit next and select the Wi-Fi you want to reconnect it. I would suggest put it back to the Wi-Fi you had before. So it goes to the app just how it was before. Click next and show it and show the QR code and QR code scan. Please wait. You click here. I heard QR code scan. Click next and wait for the camera to finish the connection. It will blink blue and then the blue and the blue will stop. We'll turn red and it says setup completed. Uh, I'm going to put just front porch for the demo here. Uh, I'm going to skip this one because I don't have a premium cam plus, even though it's worth it, believe it or not. And uh, with the camera, just plug itself. So the camera now has been connected. As you see, it is good to go. So now what we're going to do, we're going to go back to uh, what? Back to this camera, actually. And I'm going to go to the settings really quick this uh, cog wheel right here advanced settings remember before we didn't have the option now we have the option it says off and we can turn it on in here on top click on now here's the time you give it a username and a password and let me do just that and then you hit generate url and it will generate the whole link that you see right here and that is the link you would use to broadcast the stream from this camera anywhere on any software you like now let me plug both these cameras here and we will go to my tv and show you that i actually can see both these wise cameras on a third party app on my tv on an android tv yes that's a thing so the cameras are looking as you see one is just looking this direction the v3 the keyboard and this box and the v2 is looking just behind me so the the v3 is named front porch that we just gave it that name that's what it's looking and the v2 behind me might be seeing me right now as you see hi so we'll go check them both on a tv yeah so here are the cameras as you see this is the camera that's looking at the wall the v2 and this is the camera we just set up to look at the keyboard the v3 and i'm in the process populating it with more cameras and yes this is running on an app actually on a nvidia shield android tv let me just get the, the remote and you can select which one you want to Put on big screen between the two perfect so if i get out this is all just in an app as you see right there tiny cam pro on android tv give it a second to catch up with live cameras and boom you have all the cameras up and running perfect and that is just one of the uses for these cameras you can connect them to whatever you want as long as you have that wi-fi stuff and yes there is methods to actually connect them offline as well you can use them as a trail cams and whatnot absolutely beautiful and as you saw it was actually not that hard to do really easy to do in my opinion and these cameras especially the v3 yes they have come up with a v4 now v3 has a special place in my heart because it's one of those cameras just that just works forever and doesn't care i really love them I'm not gonna let them go i hope you enjoyed this video link will be down below to the uh wise support itself with a uh, full instructions and to where you can get the firmware itself and i hope you like and subscribe if you liked anything on this video we'll see you next time bye